What is going on, everybody? John here from Phoenix Trades. Hope you had a good holiday season. It's the new year. I'm excited to get back to trading. Uh, we're going to take a look at the market. I'm going to go over why I don't think the market's going to crash this year. Um, do some myth busting. Look at all the uh, indexes. Just a quick video, kind of beginning of the year, my goals for the year. Look at our Discord room, you know, what we plan to do with it, the whole the whole shebang. So first I want to start off, and let's just look at the indexes, right? We finished at all-time highs pretty much on on um, on Thursday last week. So we're chugging up, and just to look at the Dow, right? We had the big sell-off, we had the crash, you know, a lot of turbulence in between, but we're still chugging up. I don't think the market's going to crash in 2021, and this is why. We already crashed. We already crashed big. Uh, and the thing is, is I've been hearing about the next market crash since the last market crash. It's annoying. Every day, the market's going to crash. We turned up, and then June crash happened. And right after this June sell-off happened, everyone was like, oh, COVID, we're going to crash again. And then we rallied up in August. And you're sitting there thinking, we're too high, we're going to crash. And then we keep going higher, and then we finally pop and uh, September 2nd, and then we crash, and then we push up a little bit, and then everyone goes, we're gonna crash, and then we sell off for the election, right? And then they go, we're gonna crash at the election, and then we don't crash, we crash before the election, and then boom, this like rip your face off rally throughout November and December, and this melt up, and we're just hanging out up here. Uh, it's like, it seems like every time there's a green candle, the market's gonna crash. And it's like, guys, we are, it's, it's, the thing is, it's the human psychology, right? We just had a crash, so it's like you're expecting it again, you know, you know like you know like when a girl or, or a guy like cheats on you or like lies to you or a friend lies to you, and then you just automatically expect them to lie the next time, right? You just, you just think that they're gonna the next thing they say it's a lie, even if they're telling the truth. It's just this psychological PTSD. We just had a crash, like you're you know you lost money or whatever happened. You're just you're expecting it to happen again, and it's not necessarily the case. And one thing I wanted to go over why. It's right here. You guys keep on forgetting the Fed. The Fed has already shown us that they're going <laughs> to step in whenever necessary. And this is the Fed rate cut tool. And this is basically telling you the probability of what the uh, rates are going to be. And 95% we're going to stay the same. And the next Fed rate decision is three weeks. This is investing.com if you ever wanted to come look at it. But this just shows you the probability in the next rate decisions. If you come all the way out to look at December 2021, end of the year, right, there's a 93% chance that we're going to stay the same. And then negative rates are actually getting slightly increased, 6.8% from 4.8% from January. But the Fed's already said that they're not interested in going to lower rates. So basically this is telling us that we can expect to have the same interest rate probably till the end of the year. And I think the Fed's going to keep it that way to instill, you know, economic prosperity and all that good stuff, but and if you look at the 20 year on the Dow, it kind of looks like the uh, COVID crash, right? And the COVID crash here in March, pushed up the June pullback, and then we pushed up in August, and we popped, and then the election, and then we're going up, and you know, we're making higher highs, trailing this 50 moving average, I mean, we're snapping back, right? We have these corrections, I mean, this was like a market crash, you know, intra, intra month, intra year, but it's like, guys, like, like, look where the Dow was in March 2009. It was 6,400, and between now and, you know, 11 years, 12 years, it's gone up, like, 24,000 points. It's like the market only goes up. If you were to go further back, right, like, the Dow was literally, like, you know, 1,000 at one point. You know, you go way, 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 way back. Same with the S&P, right? I mean, the Dow is 30,500 right now. In 10 years, it's gonna be higher than 30,000. It's gonna be 40 or 50,000, right? And it's gonna like, eventually the Dow's gonna hit 50K, like however many years down the road. And same with the S&P and the NASDAQ will be 20K. You know, this is that 20 year, right? I mean, the NASDAQ was $809 in, you know, October 3rd, two, I mean, October 2003, right? And it, it leveled out at $10,000 in, um, in the recession. And then it's just gone, straight up and it's like guys it doesn't have to come all the way back down just because it's too high it's just gonna keep on like going up we're gonna have pullbacks we're gonna have corrections we're gonna have trending down days you know but you know it, you can't time the market and it's just a waste to sit down and wait for a crash you're just gonna sit on the sidelines you know it's like if if if, if the s p goes all the way up to four thousand and then crashes and you're waiting for it to crash and it gets to four thousand and you're like i knew it 
I knew it was gonna crash. It's like, dude, I've been making money all the way up to thirty-four thousand. Like, you you know, thirty-four hundred. You're just uh, missing out. So, I mean, you can you don't have to go you know all in, but I'm just saying uh, if you're waiting for the boogeyman, if you're waiting for the market crash, we already had one. We had a market crash in March. We're trending up. There's gonna be pullbacks, but you just need to look for opportunity. All right. If the market's weak that day, take it short. If the market's strong, take it strong. This year is about taking on opportunity. It's like trading the charts, not having a bias, not worrying about what happened last year, not worrying about what the P.E. ratio is and this and that. Look, if the chart's going up, it's going to go up, right? Like Apple. I mean, we traded Apple all the way from the end of November as it made its way into all-time highs. And we, I got out at all-time highs. I got out up here and it pulled back. It's taken a breather. We're at a demand zone. Either, you know, it might consolidate more. It might consolidate here. Apple might sell off a little bit, come back down to 127, hit this demand, and then go on into the 140 range, you know, throughout this year. I'm going to be looking for it. You know, I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and expect the market to crash, expect Apple to crash, expect it to crash. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that this year is there's optimism. 2021, 2020 is behind us. We have the vaccine. We have a lot of things to look forward to. There's a lot of sectors like Boeing and airlines and travel and these things that are, you know, they're actually at a discount from, you know, from their pre-COVID highs, right? I mean, Boeing's got a long way to go to recover what it was. Even if, you know, even if it gets half of what it was, you know, uh, halfway up to what it was, if it gets up to like 300, I mean, this is like, you know, that's a, that's a lot of ground that we can make up this year and we can trade that action you know you don't you don't have to sit here and have I mean, this looks like a, a bull flag on the daily you know if you ask me but you know we just we can just trade this action and, and look for these opportunities right i want to stay away from like the covid stocks like myrna and you know or you know pfizer i mean these things are like are like dismal already right and vax i mean they've you know, I, these are not charts that I want to trade. You know, like Neo. Neo's got its Neo day. It looks good. Apple, Amazon, Tesla. All right, Tesla's turning up. It's still making new all time highs. You know, everyone says it should be a twenty dollar stock. Like Tesla's probably gonna go to a thousand this year, guys. Okay, I'm sure it's gonna have turbulence and it might sell off. Maybe it pops, but I don't think it. I think its days of being down here at four hundred dollars a share are long gone, unless something crazy happens. And if something crazy happens, we're all gonna be taking it on the way down anyway. So in the meantime, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna look for opportunity. Tesla's having a weak day. I'm gonna short it. If it's having a strong day, I'm gonna buy it. Take it long. No bias. None of that. So, you know, take this year to, to focus on trading what makes sense and not worrying about what's going to happen next, what it should be. You don't know how high Tesla's going to go or how low it should be. You know, everyone on Robinhood wants to tell you that Tesla's only worth $50, Neo's worth $100. Like, they don't know. The guys at Goldman Sachs don't even really know. They're just making their best guess based on some goofy math that they're probably using, right? And I can tell you, if you think Tesla's too high right now, and if Tesla goes to $1,000 by February or March, then it's technically a discount and you're just missing out you know if you if you think that way then just don't trade it but don't um don't start saying what things should be and what they shouldn't be and it's like no one knows you don't know so just trade the chart trade what's going on i just want to pull up the discord just to track you know we got this discord going and you know we're running education you know all these class levels and we have you know each emotional cloud going on we have understanding volatility credit spreads we're doing all this education in this room that we started and we want to see it grow and we're going to work on you know moving it up and we have uh and we're going to work on you know um building it and i just wanted to kind of track and see where our members are at and kind of keep this in the video for the year we can check back at the end of the year see where we've gone i'm actually going to be doing a small account 300 challenge on weeble i'm going to be tracking this i'm going to track the progress this year focus on 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 you know, being a trader, um, working their way up, helping people, working on education, helping people, you know, become better traders, achieve their goals. That's the whole point. That's why we're here. That's why we have this online trading community, any community, any YouTube channel. It's all to, uh, to learn and to sort of push out knowledge and take it all in. And that's why we're here. Um, you know, the link for that will be in the um, description below. But I just wanted to document this for moving forward. And yeah, I mean, let's see what happens this year. I mean, I got all the indexes right here. I mean, we can see where they're at, you know, how high they are. And we can kind of check back throughout the year. 
and and see how we're doing maybe come back at the end of the year and and see where everything is but anyway uh john here and uh i'll see you in the next video have a good trading year let's go